Hello, let's talk about creating custom 3D families in Revit. The very first step of creating any 3D families in Revit is to understand work planes. We talked about what is a work plane and how to set it up in the last episode. If you haven't watched that out, make sure that you do. That is a skill we are going to use extensively in today's video. So what are we going to learn in today's video? Today we are going to talk about five basic family creation tools that are essential for creating any 3D families that you want to do in Revit. These are Extrusion, Blend, Sweep, Revolve, and Swept Blend. Using these five different tools, we are going to create a piece of furniture that looks like this. So let's begin. So let's start by creating a new family. When you want to create a new custom family, it's important to choose the right template. Because we want to create a furniture, let's go ahead and select a furniture family template. In this family template, you will see that there are two reference planes intersecting with each other. The intersection point is going to be your insertion point when you load this family into the project. In the table that we want to create, I want to start by creating the tabletop. If you see the design, the tabletop is at a certain height from the level. So let's go ahead in the elevation and check our reference level. From this reference level, my tabletop is at about 900 millimeters in height. So I'm going to create a reference plane for my tabletop. Let's make it about 900 millimeters in height and give it a name, tabletop. By giving it a name to a reference plane, we are actually making our life easier because we want to set this reference plane as a work plane very frequently while creating this family. So let's go back to the reference level and set our work plane to the reference plane tabletop. I'm going to say OK to this. Now, because I want to create my tabletop as a rectangle with a little bit of thickness, I'm going to use the first family creation tool that we are going to learn today is extrusion. In this, first, I would like to go ahead and sketch my rectangle. So I'm going to make it about 1200 millimeters in length and 600 millimeters in width. Once you finish creating the sketch of your cross section, next thing is to add the thickness to it. So I'm going to make it about 25 millimeters thickness in Z direction. So let's finish that up and have a look what happened. So we have a rectangle of 1200 by 600 with a 25 millimeters of thickness. You can always come back, choose any of these arrows to change the length, width or height. Or you can always come back here and change the parameters from here. In order to change the sketch of your cross section, you must always select your extrusion and go ahead and choose edit extrusion if you would like to change any of these dimensions or change the shape of your geometry. Let's go ahead and finish and come out of the sketch. Now let's add some material to it. I'm going to go ahead and make it a shaded mode. Let's select it. Go ahead in the material parameter and add a material to it. Let's say I want to create a wooden table for which I would like to have a wooden material which I don't have here. So let's duplicate the default material, call it wood tabletop. And I'm going to go in the render appearance and replace the asset to one of this default wooden material that I have in my library, which could be cherry. So I have my render appearance, but in the graphics, you will see that it st still looks gray because I am not using use render appearance here. So let's check this box. You will see that the shade that the render material is using is the same shade applied to the graphics when you're in shaded mode. I'm going to say OK to this. There we go. We have a beautiful tabletop. Let's go into the elevation, check it out. Because we already set the work plane to the tabletop, our tabletop is at 900 millimeters in height. So that's the benefit of using work planes because they already set the base for you. The next thing that we want to do is create legs for your tabletop. If this legs were simple cylinders, we could always come back to the floor plan, go ahead and create extrusion of a circle, give it a length of about 900 and finish it. This way you could have created a simple cylindrical leg. But that's not what you want to do. You want to create a tapering leg, which has a bigger circle on the bottom, tapering to the height of 900 millimeter and meeting a smaller circle. How do we create an extrusion that is tapering? 
For this, we are going to use the next family creation tool, Blend. Let's go ahead into the floor plan. Blend is basically an extrusion between two cross-section profiles. Now, always remember to set your work plane before you start creating any 3D geometry in Revit. Now, work planes are not that complicated. Just always think of the thumb rule. Set the work plane to the place where you would like to draw. Where do we want to draw here? At the very bottom of our reference level. So I'm going to set my work plane to the very bottom of our reference level. Let's go ahead and create a blend. Now first we will create a small, bigger circle at the bottom. Let's say somewhere around here. The bottom circle is about, let's say 60 millimeters in its radius. Once I have completed the sketch of the bottom profile, it's time to create the sketch for the top profile. So before you do the finish or you want to come out of the sketch mode, you must select this edit top button. Now let's create a circle of about 30 millimeters for the top circle. Now I'm going to finish that up. Let's go ahead in the elevation and see what happened. The extrusion depth is about 250 millimeters. So one way is that if you already know the height, you can always type it in, or you can simply choose this little blue arrow and drag it up all the way there. Let's go ahead and see. Now we have a tapering extrusion which has a bigger circle on the bottom and smaller circle on the top. If you would like to edit the sketch after you have created a blend, don't worry, you can always do that. Let's select the blend, edit the top or edit the base, whichever you would like to do. Let's say, let's edit the top, make it a little bit bigger, 35 maybe, and finish it. So it's that simple. Now let's go ahead and create three more legs for our table. I'm going to select this blend and I'm going to mirror this up on the other side. I'm going to select both of these legs and mirror that up on the other side. So now we have four legs on our table. Let's select them all and give it a material. I'm going to duplicate this material and call it legs because I want a different wood for it. I'm going to go ahead and appearance, replace that asset with another wooden material that I may have in my library. Let's go ahead and make it mahogany and to put it up. Graphics is already set to the user render appearance, so it has changed the shade. Okay, now you see that we have a beautiful wooden table. The next thing I want to do in my design is to add a little bit of molding around my tabletop, which looks something like this. How do I do that? This geometry has a cross-section profile that is extruded all along the four sides of my tabletop. So it's not a normal extrusion. It doesn't have two profiles, so it's not a blend. So what is it? It's a sweep. A sweep has a path on which a cross-section profile is extruded. So let's go ahead and create our molding of the tabletop by using the sweep tool. Now that before we start any geometry, what do we ask ourselves? You, where do we want to draw the path? We want to draw the path on the tabletop. Let's head and set our work plane to the tabletop reference plane. Let's go ahead and use the sweep tool by sketching the path. Now I'm going to create the rectangle tool and create four sides of my sweep path. This is the red dot that you see is going to be where we are going to draw our cross section. If you like, you can always select this reference plane and kind of change its position. So this reference plane is now going to be visible in the front and back. If you change it here, it's going to be visible in left or right views. So let's go ahead and finish the path and edit the profile. Now, because this plane is only going to be visible in left or right view, asking you to select one of them. Let's go ahead into the left view. Try, try always to draw your cross section at this red point. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and draw the profile that we want to extrude. So this is the profile that I want to extrude along the path that I have drawn. So I'm going to again finish for my profile. So the first time is finished for the path. Second time you're finishing for the profile. And now the third finish is going to be for my sweep. Let's go ahead and finish it. And let's go and see what happened. 
So now we have a continuous extrusion along the four sides of our tabletop. Let's select that sweep and add a material, same as the wood tabletop. Okay. So far we learned about extrusion with which we made a tabletop, blend with which we made the legs, and sweep with which we made the molding around the tabletop. Next thing I want to do is to create a beautiful flower vase on my table. For this, we are going to use the next family creation tool, Revolve. So Revolve has a cross section that is extruded around an axis in a revolving direction. Where do we want to draw? We want to draw the axis and the cross section in an elevation. So we need a reference plane that will take us to the elevation. So let's create a reference plane exactly in the middle of our tabletop. Set our work plane. Because we didn't give it a name, we must go ahead and pick a plane. We're going to pick a plane in this direction. So it's going to be visible either in left or right. So this is the other reference plane that we created to mark the center. Let's go ahead and revolve. First, I'm going to define my axis line. I'm going to pick this reference plane as my axis line. The axis line color is blue. The next thing I'm going to create is the cross section, which is the boundary line. The color of my boundary line is going to be pink. So let's go ahead and create a flower vase. Maybe something like this. And I'm going to give it a thickness of about five millimeters. I'm going to tap to alternate the selection. And I'm going to close my boundary. If you notice, I'm only creating the cross section on one side of the axis because the other side is going to come after we revolve this axis around 360 degrees. So whatever you draw must not never cross the axis, should always be on one side of the axis. So let's go ahead and finish it up and let's see what, we have, what we've got. So we have a beautiful flower vase. We can always come back to the material Let's say this time I'm going to choose glass as my material. When you select your revolved object, instead of having extrusion start and end, it has start angle and end angle. Right now it's starting zero from the work plane and it's going 360 degrees around that axis. Here, in case if I change it to, let's say 180 degrees, my flower vase is going to be broken. Let's go back and mend it, I'm making it 360 degrees. So you can play with these angles to create the revolved geometry for your design. We learned so far about extrusion, blend, revolve and sweep, the four basic family creation tools. The fifth family creation tool is swept blend. It's a combination of sweep and blend. So it has a pass on which two cross section profiles are blended with each other. Let's try that by adding a little piece of flower stick in our flower vase. So before we start, what do we ask ourselves? Where do we want to draw? In case of sweep, always ask, where do you want to draw your path? You want to draw a path in elevation. So there must be a reference plane that will take us to the elevation. So let's use the same reference planes that we use for the flower vase. I'm going to set it up by picking a plane and going into one of the elevation views. Let's go to swept blend and sketch the path. Let's go and maybe add a spline. So it gives us a little bit of more freedom. Maybe something like that. The limitation to swept blend is that it can only have a path in one continuous line, which means if I want to continue this path ahead, that is something not allowed. So I must have a start point and an end point. So it can have one arc, one line, one spline, or any of these shapes only. Let's go ahead and finish the pass. So if you see here, it says modify swap blend sketch pass contextual tab. So I'm going to finish sketching the pass. So this is still on. It means I still have more things to do here. So I'm going to select my first profile and edit my profile. It's not possible to create this because this is a perpendicular view. For this, I'm going to go in 3D view because that's a little bit easier to see. The red highlighted point is where I'm going to draw my cross section. 
So let's go ahead and use the circle, maybe about six millimeters radius. I'm going to finish the profile and choose my next profile, profile two, edit my profile and create a smaller circle. You can also experiment with any other shapes that you like. I'm going to make it a very small shape of about two millimeters radius. So I have two cross section profiles that I want to blend along the path that I have drawn here. So I'm going to finish my profile. So first finish for the path, second finish for the first profile one, third finish for profile two, and now the fourth finish for the swept blend. There we go. We have a beautiful flower stick. It more looks like a snake to me. I'm sure you can, you can do a better job than me. Let's go ahead and select this snake or a flower stick. Go to the material and add a material to it. Maybe let's add a material which is a plant. Use render appearance and I'm going to go ahead and change the appearance to, to go ahead and look for something green like grass. Um, maybe generic. I'm going to say OK to this and there we go. Now with green it does look like a snake. <laughs> Let's go ahead and change this to realistic mode to see all the textures that we've applied to our table. So using this example of this table we learned about five family creation tools that you can use to create any 3D custom family in Revit. What you can do with these tools really depends on your own creativity and your own practice with these tools. In the next episode, we are going to take the same table design and make it again, but this time make it parametric. So please make sure that you don't miss that episode because that is going to lay the foundation for creating parametric families. So please make sure, subscribe, stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.